Hi, this is Nathan with Sparkfun Electronics with an exciting new product launch today. We're going to be talking about the new LoRa Serial Long Distance Radio Transceiver. Let's open it up and have a look. The LoRa Serial is an open source hardware, open source software platform for transmitting serial over long distances. So if you've ever heard of LoRa, a portmanteau of long range, this radio uses that same modulation scheme to transmit whatever serial data you've got from point A to point B. The radio operates in the ISM band, and in North America, that's 900 megahertz to about 930 megahertz. There are many great features to this radio, including encryption built in. So AES 256-bit encryption is enabled by default. On top of that, we have CRC, so error code sort of checking and making sure that the packets get where they need to be, as well as frequency hopping. Now, there are many radios on the market inside the ISM band that claim frequency hopping, but because they are closed boxes, we really can't say whether those radios are within the letter of the law of the FCC. LoRa Serial is. We frequency hop every 400 milliseconds, which is the maximum dwell time in North America, as well as hitting the minimum number of 50 channels. There's a lot of features built into the LoRa Serial, but the main thing you need to know is whatever serial you put in to one radio will appear at the radio with acknowledgements. What that means is that you don't have to worry about the link, you don't have to worry about the frequency hopping, you shove serial data at it and it'll appear at the other side over a very long distance. Today, we're hoping to demonstrate a link of over 9 miles line of sight. You won't see that with other 900 megahertz radios, only with the LoRa Serial. Using the LoRa modulation technique, will you be able to see range like that? LoRa Serial uses an opaque cover so that you can see the LEDs inside. These include four RSSI LEDs to indicate link signal strength as well as a transmit and receive LED so you can see the serial uh, data moving back and forth. Uh, right now I'd like to demonstrate the train button. So whenever we have a pair of radios we need to be sure that those two radios operate on the same AES key and network ID. And so for privacy we can use uh, a ballpoint pen to hold the train button down for a few seconds on unit number one. And the unit will start counting in binary and get up to about three. That device is in client mode. The second device we're going to put into server mode by holding it for six seconds. And once we release it, uh, that unit is in server mode. The two units will connect, communicate, um, use a new automatically generated random 256-bit key, set a new random network ID, and link up. These two radios are now paired and operate on their own unique hop table, meaning that no two other pair of radios will uh, interrupt or uh, be able to communicate with these radios unless they have the identical settings and identical AES keys, allowing privacy between radio pairs. Now let's do a quick uh, startup and demonstration of these two radios. We've got them plugged in over USB-C. We can see the link lights are illuminated. The two radios are communicating. And on our computer, we've got two terminal windows. So TerraTerm is what we like to use around here. And any serial that appears in one window uh, shows up on the other window. We are passing simple serial back and forth. Um, these units can be connected to over USB-C. There's also a UART connector, so these can be connected to embedded devices uh, using simple serial, like to, connected to an Arduino or anything else that has a UART or serial interface. Um, this is 3.3 volt and 5 volt tolerant. One of the things we're most proud of with these radios is the generation of the hop tables. The hop table is just a list of frequencies that the radios will move to as they move every 400 milliseconds. The reason for hop tables is to make sure that uh, pairs of radios or radios operating in the 900 megahertz spectrum, the ISM band, don't stomp on each other, don't transmit at the same time as other radios are trying to use those frequencies. So we have 400 milliseconds to do whatever we want, but then we need to move to the next frequency so that we don't uh, interrupt other devices that may be operating in that same frequency range. Uh, these radios use a randomized hop table so that they know what frequencies to jump to every 400 milliseconds and do that with uh, about one to two milliseconds um, of uh, clock synchronization so that we don't lose data as they move through their hop tables. Let's open up one of these LoRa serial radios and have a look inside. So we have a uh, industrial 3D printed SLA enclosure, as well as uh, the electronics. This board has a SAMD21 running Arduino code on it. And on the back side, we've got our one watt LoRa module based on the SX1276. 
So it's a very common, very straightforward LoRa radio with very high power output. The maximum you can have within the ISM band of 900 megahertz with a half wave dipole antenna that gives us the maximum range between a pair of LoRa serial radios. And with that, let's head out into the field. Here we are at NCAR in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. We are about nine miles away from SparkFun HQ, testing out the LoRa serial. We've got our half-wave dipole antenna attached. So here we see a counter incrementing with a delivery of about 15, 20 bytes from SparkFun HQ coming in about once a second, nine miles away. If you're building something where you need to get some data from point A to point B and need a little more range, consider LoRa serial for your next project. Or a cereal for the, your next date. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. myself. Including frequency hopping, CRC error correction, and 256-bit uh, AES encryption. Uh, okay, I don't know if that was good or not, or if that's too much information, or... Huh? Yeah, let's, let's get pause real quick. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a lot of words a little fast. If I need to slow down, please let me know.